Today I'm going to show you my updated structure for Performance Max campaigns in Google Ads for maximum revenue and profitability on your e-commerce store. What I'll teach you today is the same method I used in this account that I run right here, where you can see that I've achieved an increase in revenue from Performance Max of $1 million, which was a 53% increase versus the previous period. And note that at the same time return on ad spend actually went up by 121 percent as well so not only was it more revenue it was a very profitable revenue the performance max campaign structure principles i will teach you here are what i used on this account and all our accounts at my google ads agency big flare so let's dive right in shall we before you zero in on the exact way to structure your performance max campaigns you must first figure out how many campaigns you can actually run if you have too many campaigns, the AI in Google Ads that optimizes the campaign for you will never get out of learning mode. You'll be stuck forever in learning mode, your results will be up and down like crazy, and you'll be frustrated and earning less money. But if you have too few campaigns, well, you might be less frustrated and the results might be a bit less up and down. However, the cost of having too few campaigns is an invisible cost. The cost is that you could be making a lot more profit with more campaigns and a more segmented structure. And the kicker here is that this is a hidden cost. There's no easy way of knowing how much money you're missing out on because you don't know how much more you could be making until after you move to the more segmented structure. So how do you know how many campaigns is the right amount? Well, it all comes down to conversion volume. You need to structure your performance max campaigns so that Google's AI can properly optimize your cost per click bids and maximize revenue for you. Google's AI is super powerful at optimizing the cost per click bids for you but only if it has enough conversions. So here's what you should do. You need to know how many conversions per month you are getting in all of your Performance Max campaigns. If you're getting less than about 100 conversions per month or per 30 days on average across all your Pmax campaigns, then just run one campaign for everything. You can still segment your asset groups inside the campaign, so don't worry there is some control here, but really if you're getting much less than 100 conversions per month, then the value of grouping all your data into one campaign so that the AI can optimize bids better for you is much higher than the value you're gonna get out of having campaigns split out to more than one. Please note, by the way, that these conversion volume thresholds I have here are for performance max only. If you get an extra 500 conversions on search campaigns and an extra 100 conversions on YouTube, well, well done, but that does not count towards these thresholds. These thresholds are for performance max only. At 100 to 500 conversions, now you can afford two to four campaigns. And for each of the campaigns within your structure, try to have at least 50 to 100 conversions in each campaign. Much less than 50 conversions per campaign per month, and you're gonna risk having these campaigns in learning mode too long and stuck with lower performance. So here's an example. This one here would be bad. This is what not to do. Let's say I decided on a four campaign structure for performance max. And then at the end of the typical month, I see something like this. 150 conversions in this campaign, nice. 120 conversions in this one, also nice. But campaign three and campaign four are each getting 40 conversions below the 50 threshold, so not so nice. What would be better, in my opinion, in this scenario would be to group up my campaigns a bit more to three campaigns like this. Maybe I would group campaigns three and four into one campaign, giving me 80 conversions per month in my third campaign above the 50 threshold, which makes the AI in Google much better at optimizing my bids for me and getting as much revenue and profit as possible. At 500 to 1000 conversions, you can do between three to eight campaigns for Performance Max. And again, same thinking applies here where you want at least 50 to 100 conversions per campaign per month. Once you get beyond a thousand conversions per month, you can have anywhere from three to 10 campaigns. Same rule again, at least 50 to 100 conversions per campaign per month. A couple of notes on all of this, you'll notice in the two top tiers, that I gave a range of campaigns, either 3 to 8 or 3 to 10. That's because you don't have to have a lot of campaigns. If you get a thousand conversions per month and you can fit your ideal campaign structure into just three campaigns, then go ahead and do it. Don't split out more campaigns just for the sake of it if the campaign structure you're using does not call for it. Within these campaign number ranges, always try and aim for the lower end of the range where possible whilst still using one of the three options I will show you next for your actual structure. That's because fewer campaigns means more conversions per campaign, which means better decisions by Google's AI, and that means more money for you at the end of the day. 
Alright, so now we know roughly how many campaigns we can aim for, here's the fun part. How do we actually structure the campaigns? This is the bit where I have to tell you, it depends. It depends on what you're selling, how many different items you have, your gross profit margins, and how many categories you have. But whatever your business looks like, there are three main campaign structures to choose from, so I will show you all three and explain to you how to know which one to use for you. First up, let's talk about structuring your campaigns based on the return on ad spend, also known as ROAS, performance of your products. What we do here is we segment our products based on how high or low their actual return on ad spend is in the system. The simplest version of the ROAS performance structure would be like this. Two campaigns, one for high ROAS and one for low ROAS. You need to decide a threshold yourself based on your own product data, but maybe for you, you might decide that anything above 500% can be considered high and anything below 500% is considered low. Once you've segmented each of your products into one of these two campaigns, you would aim campaign one at a higher ROAS target, say 500%, and campaign two, you would aim at a lower ROAS target, say 300%. When you do it this way, what happens is that because the high ROAS products are not in the same campaign as the low one, the system will be able to bid and spend higher on these products and get you more revenue. At the same time, because the low ROAS products are no longer in the same campaign as the high ROAS ones, the system would bid lower on these products, which increases their ROAS whilst also decreasing their spend, making them more profitable for you. So more revenue from the high performing products, more profit on the low performing products. That's what this structure is all about. If you have enough conversions, you can go up to a three-tier structure, high, medium, and low ROAS products. Again, you need to decide where to draw the line yourself based on your own product data, because it's different for everyone. Finally, if you have enough conversions, you can even take this up to a four campaign structure. In the four campaign version, we can introduce a special new type of campaign, which I call a zombies campaign. The Zombies campaign is here to address a specific problem that often happens in Performance Max campaigns. And that problem is that sometimes you get these products that just never spend any money. What could be happening here is that Google needs to raise the cost per click bids on these products in order to test them properly. But when these products are in the same campaign as other more successful products that are eating up all the budget, Google never really tests the zombie products. So what you see is a portion of your product list that never gets any clicks or spend, and that's what the zombie campaign is for. You put your zombies in here, those products that didn't get any clicks or spend, and then you make sure to not use a return on ad spend target in this campaign. All your other campaigns should be using a return on ad spend target, but not this one. You just tell the system in the settings to try and maximize your revenue, but don't give it a ROAS target to work to. That way it will have some freedom to actually bid on these products. Note that you should keep your zombie campaign budget relatively low, and this campaign is actually most likely to be unprofitable for you if you look at it only on a return on ad spend basis. That said, profitability is not the point of this campaign. The point is to make sure Google tests out these products that were otherwise not being tested. What you will sometimes find in this campaign is a product starts spending and winning and actually does all right. Once you see that happening and the product has plenty of conversions, move that product into one of the other campaigns the high, medium, or low campaign, because the whole point of the zombies campaign was to just try and revive some zombies. Once they are back from the dead, move them into one of the other campaigns. Next up is the product category campaign structure for Performance Max. This is the simplest structure by far to understand. All you have to do is create one campaign for each of your product categories. Here's a basic example for a business specializing in living room furniture. They might have a campaign for their sofas, one for their coffee tables, and another one for their lamps. Now it's important to note that on its own, doing this structure does not give you any major performance benefits. The only real benefit here is organizational. If you do have plenty of conversions per month and it helps you to think about and manage and optimize your campaigns a bit more easily when you have them broken out this way, then by all means go for it. That said, if every product category has a very different average gross profit margin percentage, then your product category structure could also end up becoming your gross profit margin structure at the same time, which does give a big performance boost when done right. Now, I will cover gross profit margin structures in just a bit. Let's stay with product category structure for just a moment more. Now, under the basic example, and assuming all the gross profit margins are the same, there's no direct benefit to performance of the account by doing it this way. It's done more just so that you can see things more clearly. However, you can combine two or more structures to provide a performance benefit. 
For example, let's say my sofas campaign gets lots of conversions and very variable performance. Some sofas have a sky-high ROAS and the other ones are really much lower. For my other campaigns, let's assume I don't get loads of conversions for them right now. What I could do here is combine my product category structure and my ROAS performance structure and have something like this. Because sofas is getting very variable performance, I break it out into ROAS tiers. Before doing that, I check the conversion volume of sofas and yes, I can confirm it's getting enough conversions to be broken out into two campaigns. Tables and lamps in this example may or may not have very variable ROAS performance. Regardless of that, I'm not going to break them out like I did for sofas because they get too low of a conversion volume. Okay, one more example of combining structures here for you. This one is similar to the previous example, but the difference is that this time both tables and lamps have lots of conversions. The conversion volume in my campaigns is enough for me to afford up to six campaigns, and I have three categories, so I might break each category out into two ROAS tiers like this. What I've just covered here is an important concept, and I hope the examples helped to make it clear for you. First, you need to know how many campaigns you can afford as per the conversion volume guidelines I gave. Once you know that, not only can you pick just one of the three structures I'm showing you today, you can actually cross-blend all the structures to break out into even more campaigns, but only if your conversion volume allows it. Heck, if you wanted to, and if you had enough conversions, you can combine all three of the campaign structures I'm teaching you today, and then you would end up with quite a lot of campaigns. This is only viable in very high conversion volume accounts, and remember that there's also an upper limit where too many campaigns just makes it harder for you to manage and hold everything together in your brain properly. That's why in the first part of this video, I suggested an upper limit of about 10 campaigns for Performance Max. In just a moment, I'll teach you my favorite Performance Max campaign structure. First, let me tell you about my Google Ads agency, Big Flag. We are a boutique paid ads agency helping businesses just like yours to scale their revenue. We offer various service options that fit all budgets and ad spend levels, including some affordable 30-day packages. If you need help scaling your ad campaigns, click the link in the description below to book a time to talk with me personally. On the call, you and I will chat, I'll find out more about your business, and then we can see if my team and I can help scale your business too. The third and final structure option I use in 2024 and beyond for Performance Max in Google Ads is Gross Profit Margin Structure. This structure is a bit more complicated to get your head around, but it's also potentially the most powerful structure for maximizing profit, so stick with me on this. Okay, so in the gross profit margin structure for e-commerce performance max campaigns, we segment our products into different campaigns based on their gross profit margin tier. It'll help if I do a simple example. Let's say we have just six products and they look like this. Products one to three all have a really high gross profit margin. They average around 80%. The next three products have a really low gross profit margin. They vary a bit, but they all average around 20%. Of course, you probably have more products and the gross profit margins are not as neat as this. As I say, this is a simplified example just to help you understand the concept. Okay, so what I would do here is I would create a two campaign structure, one for high GPM products and the other for low ones. I put the products into the corresponding buckets like this. Now that the products are in the right bucket or gross profit margin tier, what I can now do is set my bid strategy settings in Google Ads accordingly. For the high gross profit margin products, I would use a lower return on ad spend target. If a product has a very high margin, then it breaks even at a fairly low return on ad spend. That means it does not need to have a very high ROAS target. Instead, it is better to give it a lower ROAS target. Of course, this lower ROAS target still needs to be well above the break-even point, but my break-even point is much lower on the high-margin products. And so, compared to the low-margin campaign number two, my high-margin campaign number one can have a lower ROAS target. The benefits of having a lower ROAS target here is that then the system can set the cost per click bids much higher leading to a higher share of the market, which leads to more sales and revenue for you. On the other hand, if the product is in the low GPM tier, the reverse logic applies. Low margin products break even at a higher return on ad spend, so I need my return on ad spend target to be higher here. With the higher ROAS target, the system is going to have to set the cost per click bids much lower. 
So you'll get less share of the market and a lower volume of sales and revenue. However, those sales and that revenue that you do get will actually be profitable for you. This is a much better outcome than if these low margin products were lumped in the same campaign as the high margin ones. If they were lumped together, then they may end up actually costing you money instead of turning a profit for you, like they will when they are here in their own campaign with their own ROAS target that suits their margin level. So that's the basic idea of gross profit margin structures. I did a very basic example with just a few products. Of course, it gets a bit more complicated when you have hundreds or thousands of products, but however many products you have, the steps are actually the same. Create a spreadsheet of your products and put product gross profit margin of each product into a column next to the product name in the sheet. Organize your products into around two to four different buckets or tiers based on their gross profit margin level. Create a performance max campaign for each of the buckets. Then set your ROAS targets according to the bucket with higher gross profit margin products leading to a lower ROAS target and vice versa. And one important caveat with this is that this structure is not relevant for everyone. For many advertisers, the gross profit margin is the same or at least very similar across the board, or maybe you only have a couple of products. If that is you, then there's not enough advantage to this structure to make it worthwhile. If all your products that actually make sales are within 10 to 20% of each other in terms of their gross profit margin, then I don't recommend using the gross profit margin structure. Here's an example of when not to use the GPM structure. In this simplified example, I have five products. Their gross profit margins do vary a bit, but not a lot. They are all around 50 to 60 percent ish. Seeing as the variance here is not very high, I might as well not break these out by gross profit margin tier. I might as well bucket them in one. A second example of when not to use GPM structures is this one. Let's say I have the same five products as before, all around 50 to 60 percent gross profit margin. But now I have a sixth product which has a very different gross profit margin level. However, this product doesn't make any sales anyway, it's not very popular. Maybe it's a thing no one is searching for. If that's the case, then it's still not worth using a GPM structure because the products that actually get all the sales have roughly the same profit margin and the product that has a very different margin doesn't get any sales anyway. So it's not worth complicating my structure for. Along with structuring your Performance Max campaigns correctly, you are going to need to know how to put the right bid strategy in place. Don't worry, I've got you covered on that topic as well. Just check out this video up here. Check out the video and see exactly how to set your bid strategy settings in your Performance Max campaigns for maximum profit.